Welcome to the Online Super Coach Podcast. Today, I'm really excited. We really have one of the uh, titans in the fitness coaching, in the coaching space, in the business coaching space here with us. He, uh, he started his own uh, fitness coaching business, Fitness Warrior, years ago, and now he's the uh, CEO and founder of Elite CEOs which I think boasts over almost $60 million, I'm not if I'm mistaken, like over the, the, the term. Uh, additionally, he was a Division I football player. I mean, that alone is what some people's accomplishments are. He's a model. He went to school for engineering. He, he, and he really is one of the premier uh, uh, coaches in this space. We're really uh, honored to have him on. Uh, Tanner Chittister, welcome. Yeah, thanks for having me, man. Excited to be here. All right, great. Yeah, man. And again, congratulations on all your success. I, you know, it's wonderful. Absolutely wonderful. Um, mm -hmm. We always like to start off the podcast here with like a, you know, like a phrase or a mantra, something that motivates you. So is there something that, you know, that like a, some, something like that, that you want to share? I just like the Nike commercials with the just do it slogan, man. I mean, <laughs> yeah. it's so simple, but that's, I mean, that's really most of what life is. Uh, so I always get inspired when I see their commercials, honestly, that's one of my favorite things to go by. Yeah, man, it's it's very simple. Just just stop talking about it. Just go ahead and go work at it, right? Go do the work, right? That's awesome. Um, so I guess uh, one of the questions I want to ask you is, uh, if you are sitting, you're traveling a lot, you're sitting on a plane with somebody, like how do you describe yourself to someone else that's next to you? Like how do you, uh, what do you tell them that it is exactly that you do? I just usually say I own a bunch of companies now and I basically do business consulting and I leave it at that. Uh, <laughs> I think anything more complex than that goes down a rabbit hole. So I'm just like, yeah, I own a couple companies and we basically consult businesses on marketing and sales and stuff like that. And yeah. that's basically what I say. So, yeah. Cause it's so like wide stretched of all the different things that you're kind of uh, involved with. So, uh, I guess yeah. you want to keep it to that. <laughs> keeps it keeps it simple. Keeps it simple. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, so uh, bringing up the fitness warrior, because it's, it's online super coach, like people are interested in, yeah. in, in that. Do, is that business still, uh, do you still have that or is that still? No, we, we don't. So I started, I started off with, uh, is fit warrior. So fit warrior, oh, sorry. fit warrior, and that was the first company. And I, I mean, I full plan on just keeping it, but what ends up happening or what ended up happening, excuse me, can speak today is I did so well that people started asking me for help. And at first I did the, you know, oh, I'll do two things at once and I'll put half my time here and half my time there, but it doesn't work. And the business, like for trainers, when trainers started asking for help, that just took off so fast and got yeah. so big so quick that I just sat there and I said, well, this one's doing 300 a month. This one's doing 150 a month. So I'm going to stick with the one that's doing 300. And I slowly started shutting the other one down. Um, so in hindsight, that might have been a mistake, but I was just pedal to the metal go 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 so yeah. fast that I started seeing it was starting to break I was having issues I had people working in both businesses and uh you just realize it's not a good idea and so I was like hey let's focus like where the most money is or where most money is right now yeah and that's kind of how this whole thing was born I never planned on it and I honestly hated business coaches and I still kind of do to a degree so it's ironic <laughs> I became what I hate you know <laughs> I don't know <laughs> that's that's uh well like batman right he became uh the the, the bats he hated bats <laughs> yeah, exactly um, oh. but but yeah no i totally uh can relate to that i have like uh five smaller businesses you know myself i have a health club and uh a variety of other clubs and it's and it's and it's just like you said it's like to take your focus from one to the other um it feels like shoots and ladders you're going from one and then you're fixing this problem and you come over here and you fix that problem so i, I could totally relate to that and that makes yeah, like sense it, it, in, in the defense Oh, sorry. Sorry to cut you. I didn't mean to cut you off. Apologize. Yeah. Uh, in, in someone's defense, you can do it if other people are operating them, right? Yeah. You're just the owner. But when you're actually in the thick and you're taking calls and you're doing those types of things, uh, it doesn't work. You know, so yeah. now that I own more companies, it's different because CEOs run them all. But in the past, it's just not a good idea. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. I agree. The um, So staying with that for another minute, um, were you, I, I wasn't sure about this. So uh, forgive me for that doing oh, all the homework. I thought I did enough homework, but were you ever in that timeline, like a trainer or ever did in any in-person training? Yeah, I did very brief, like very brief. I'm talking like a couple months, but the yeah. I got certification, all that, but I just saw it immediately. I was like, this just isn't going to get me anywhere uh, yeah. in terms of financially. Right. And if you enjoy it, that's great, but it's just a, it's a time suck. Right. And you're trading time for money. And end of the day, when you're trading time for money, it just isn't, you can't scale it. Right. You yeah. land so much time in the day. 
Um, so I just never saw that as a legitimate path. It was more of like, I was kind of in the mindset, oh, let me get my certification. So I'm legit. And like, people trust me. And then no one ever asked and no one ever cared because I was jacked, right? Like at that time, yeah. I was super jacked. Uh, I don't, I'm not as big now nearly, but you know, it's like, that's how I got my clients. I was like, yeah, I'm yeah, super yeah. Jacked. Like, you should listen to me because like, look at me. And that's, <laughs> how, that's how I started my online stuff. Yeah. So yeah, that's essentially because, because most trainers are, you know, trained for a while and then they, they get burnt out or what have you. And then they want to look for some alternative like this pops up, but you know, you were just for like a minute, you kind of just did it. And then you mm -hmm. made that transition really quickly. Like what's, so that's just amazing that you're able to even switch over that fast, like into, into, uh, is that really how the timeline went? You went from the trainer to the fitness. Uh, yeah. So, like so yeah, the second year I was in business was insane. I went, uh, so the first year I did a million. Right. And we got up to like, I started at zero and I just moved quick. I moved really fast. And I got the fitness company up to about 150,000 a month. And then the trainers started asking for help. And it, I mean, I was like, I'm not doing it, dude. I don't want to do it. I don't want to do it. I don't want to do it. I had a waiting list about 10 to 15 people who wanted to pay me 10 grand. Wow. I was like, fuck it. I was like, fuck, I'll do it. I'll do it. Yeah. And then uh, that did 10 million that year. That, that was probably the most stressful, like grind to the like grindstone year of my life. Like I, I mean, I didn't do shit that year besides work. Like, yeah, yeah. I didn't do anything. Uh, but it makes sense because that's such a massive jump. Yeah. And then the year after that is how Elite CEOs came about because, you know, it, it, it's a mistake now. Like, I thought in hindsight, I thought that was better. But, you know, it's easier to stay niched down. It is easier yeah. to stay niched down. And a lot of times that gives you, you know, more expertise, a little more leverage. But I just was like, oh, let me keep opening it up. And then right when I did that, we just absolutely exploded because COVID was happening. Yeah. Yeah. And right time. Right? At the time. Right. I thought it was all us, but part of it was COVID. And yeah. so we just hit the, we just hit the like pedal at the same time uh, we were scaling and COVID happened. And then that's when we shot up. We were doing, right place, right time. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So it, part of it matters, man. Some of it is luck. Uh, some of it is luck, you know? And I, I think sometimes now, like if we could see inside like Elon Musk yeah. or like Bill Gates minds, they might look like, you know, Shaquille O'Neal, right? Mentally. Because yeah. you see athletes like, oh, I, I, I'll never be like that, yeah. right? And so sometimes I wonder if we could see inside some of the top people in the world's minds, if it's the same where it's like, yeah, like their minds are just so high level. They yeah. think differently, like we can't ever get there. Yeah, that's really, really good. Especially, especially Elon Musk. Oh my God, he's unbelievable. You know, that's yeah. it's incredible. So tell me about how like it was starting. Like how was it obviously very, very <laughs> difficult getting started, you know? Yeah, I mean, it was the worst. Uh, I started off, I had a mentor who told me to drop out of school. I mean, that's how I got into business in the first place. I didn't know anything about business. I've never met anyone in business. I didn't have any friends who were in business. I didn't have know any friends, parents who were in business. I just didn't know shit about business. Uh, I remember seeing a subway and I could not comprehend how they made money. I was like, how do they get customers? Like, how do they, like, you know, it just was so over my head. Uh, my mentor told me to drop out of school at the year left. And the reason I dropped out is he's like, what's your goal? I want to make a shit ton of money. He's like, okay, what's that number to you? And I was like, you know, millions of dollars. He's like, all right, well, that's, that's not going to do it for you. So you're wasting right. your time. He convinced me to drop out. And from 22 to like 23 and a half, I started learning about internet marketing. So he actually married one of Russell Brunson's cousins, which is how I found all of, out about ClickFunnels. Yeah. And I wasn't making any money, but I was learning a lot. So he showed me how to build out a whole product, how to, you know, set it up on Amazon, you know, web services, click funnels, opt-in pages. I mean, the whole nine, bro. Like I learned yeah. everything. And uh, at the time I wasn't making any money, but that came to help me later on. So around 23, I'm like, Hey, I'm in my hometown. I'm feeling more like a loser. Let me, you know, go and be an adult. And I went off to Utah to spend more time with my family. And I was trying to get the business to work. Still wasn't making shit. And I was a server and door-to-door -door salesman. Then 25 comes around. And I remember to this day, I don't remember the exact day, but it was in the summer. And I was looking at my bank account. And I remember I had the same amount of money that it did three years ago. Yeah. That's when it clicked. I was like, dude, this shit is not working. Like, I'm fucked. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> yeah, so I remember in that moment that I saw an ad on Facebook. I clicked on it. And it said, how to build an online fitness business. I didn't know anything about it, but you know, I was like, oh, I'm in fitness. I played division one football, et cetera. Got on the call, paid them everything I had. I had $2,000. I put three on a credit card 
And then from there, it was history. Uh, they just basically said, hey, start messaging people, raise your price. And I'd done sales and all these other things. So I started making sales and I thought it was comical. Uh, I was actually more upset than elated because I felt... Why you I was this close. Yeah, I was like, I was this close the whole time, basically. And I didn't get there. And then everything just blew up from there. And so, you know, now we're five years deep. I'm removed from the company now, but that was a start, man. And uh, it, it's crazy that all I had to do is get on the phone and raise my price. That's pretty much it. Yeah, you got on the phone, raise your price. And was it a lot of the messaging was just communication with the, with the prospects, basically? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I just was super good at speaking to people. And so the way I would reach out is it was a cold DM. And I done door to door sales. So shit was easy for me. Like I felt yeah, it was easy. That's the hardest thing, period. Yeah, because I'm not knocking on the door. I just sit in my bed in my boxers. I remember telling my parents I would close a deal in my boxers, like basically half naked. I was like, this is amazing. I love this shit. Yeah. And I would reach out. And what I would say is, uh, let's say it was you. I'd just be like, hey, Denison or D or, you know, whatever. Uh, sick, sick Corvette, dude. I love those. Like, just hope it's not weird. I just want to like compliment you. Oh, dude, thanks so much. I'm like, yeah, curious. Like, what do you do for work? Just wondering. And uh, oh, I do this. So I'm like, cool. Does it keep you busy? And you're like, yeah. And as soon as you said, yes, I had you. And I go, oh, got it. Does that make it hard to work out? And that was my transition question. Or I'd say, does it make it hard to eat? Right. Does it whatever? And people, the, the, the thing people, it really frustrates me. Cause I don't know, maybe it just comes naturally to me, but they say weird shit. Yeah. And it's just like talking to a girl, like you, you got to train. If you said that, if you said what I just said at a bar, it sounds very conversational. Like yeah. she doesn't think I'm trying to sell her fitness. She just thinks I'm asking. Yeah. And that was the key. So they go, Oh, well, you know, it actually does. I was like, man, did I totally get it? Uh, I've been a division one athlete, et cetera. I still feel that way. Like what, what do you have a goal right now? And, it, and like, is there's like, yeah, like I'm trying to lose 20 pounds. Like does, you know, is it, what's your struggle? Oh, what have you tried? Have you ever had a coach? And then at that point, I'm like, well, hey, look, I know this is kind of weird. I didn't mean to go down this rabbit hole with you, LOL. But if you like, I do this fitness stuff all day long and give you some pointers. Again, casual, very yeah. casual. And they'd always be like, yeah, for sure. I'm like, cool. Um, well, look, instead of typing out another 300 pages, LOL, I can just hop on a quick call. Here's my number. What's yours? That was it. Get on yeah. the call, build a little rapport, say, hey, I'm going to send you a questionnaire, some more questions. So I like your height, your weight, foods you like. They fill that out. And in the questionnaire, I'd have two questions I really cared about. It was like, you know, I can give you a program that works if it, you know, if you know 100% works, are you willing to pay for it? Something of that nature, it, it sounded better. And then just like, what's your commitment level one to 10? And that was it, man. And I was doing $50,000 a month doing that. And the only reason I wasn't doing more is, it, you know, this just time. Like it takes a couple, it takes a day or two to like, you call them, yeah. you set up the next call you know, you're messaging X amount of people, so many people see it. So it was more of a just time capacity. But that's really how I started building my mini fortune. And then from there, I just started paying coaches like crazy to show me how to get ads to work. And then once ads worked, you know, you can make money forever, pretty much. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's phenomenal. And you like that's fine superpower. And you just, and a lot of it's just like you said, like a lot of times you get people like DM you cold. It's just like the same copy and paste stuff. And that's so unnatural. And the way you did it was very natural because well, you were putting into work to actually doing it yeah well and, and even if someone knows what you're doing you just play it off like if a girl's like like dude like i have a boyfriend oh i, oh, I wasn't <laughs> yeah like, I, I wasn't trying to ask you anything like sorry and then they're yeah. like oh no 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 like i'm oh like, yeah like you just have to play it off and be conversational but people i don't know when they turn into sales their brains turn off and i just think part of it you know probably my defense or like probably to their defense is you know i've done door-to-door -door sales when you've done door-to-door -door sales Everything, everything because they could hit me with 20, 25 objections, phone sales, it's price spouse. Think about it. That's it. Right. I mean, there's really nothing else and everything right. else around that is just a belief objection. Right. So, uh, yeah, man, I mean, I, it was funny to me, but in hindsight, I look back and I think part of me not having success those first few years probably got me ready for success. So, you know, it's like, Oh, the first year I did a million when I started making money. But if right. you look at when I wasn't making money, it took me probably three, four oh, years to actually figure it out. Yeah. Well, it's like the, I mean, I don't know how I'm a basketball fan of you, but I like the Jordan and LeBron analogy. Like Jordan yeah. is so freaking competitive. He, no one will deny how they get the, the goat debate. He's super duper competitive and why he was cut. He was cut in his high school and in, in high school playing basketball. LeBron was a monster since forever. He never had that like, he never had that. So in my opinion, Jordan's just like a little bit better. He's got that, he's got that like tenacity where he just doesn't want to lose it. He doesn't want to lose it. 
Yeah, bad things happening to is a good thing. Yeah. It, because if, you, if you, nothing bad happens to you, you just have no good drive. And I grew up in an affluent neighborhood. Uh, we weren't really that affluent. Uh, I, I feel like my dad, like we had seven kids. So like oh, it, wow. it didn't really go that way um, versus someone who has one kid, right? So you just imagine taking care of seven kids. But I remember seeing other kids get cars and this and that. And I was just like, man. And as I got older, I was so glad because I just had this chip on my shoulder. I never would have had if my dad had given me stuff. And I, a lot of my friends that I knew. They don't have that drive. They don't have I, that. I don't want to live their lives. And, yeah. and I don't think because they never came up against adversity. I think every time stuff got hard, they would just ask their parents. Yeah. I 100% agree with what you're saying right now. 100% agree with what you're saying right now. Totally. Totally. That's, that's really, 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 really good stuff. Um, you mentioned your, your, your family, like you have some of your family working with you in, in some of the businesses. I do. So I've had two of my brothers. I also had two of my sisters at one point, but they, they're, they're younger and, you know, they kind of just did some like setting and stuff. Yeah. But they're, they're not currently doing it, but the two, the two have been there with me since almost day one is Benson and Gentry. Yeah. That's yeah. awesome. Well, I applaud you for that. That's, anyone who's worked with family before knows sometimes it could be, you know, it's, it's there's a lot of pluses and then sometimes there's some minuses, <laughs> you know? So yeah. yeah. It can be. Um, so ne next, uh, next thing I want to ask you is uh, which I think some of the listeners would be appreciative of is like, what are some of the attributes that make up a successful online trainer? Yeah. I mean, honestly, you don't really have to be, people are getting pissed at this, but you don't have to be good at training. Right. Like it, it actually, it's sad to me because I'm in Miami and those trainers get paid probably more than most in-person trainers. Some yeah. of them are getting 150, 200, $250 an hour. That's crazy. Yeah. They're all maxed out. And the complaint and they know, like they'll see my ads and they'll see me in the gym and you know, they'll talk to me. One of the guys trained Steve will do it. And he's trains like six, nine, he trains some of the celebrities and it's the same thing. He's like, yeah, but bro, like my time is not my own and I always have to be with them and all this stuff. Yeah. So it really comes down to learning how to sell online because when I started training, I mean, I knew I've done stuff for years, but I didn't go through this rigorous, like NASM certification stuff. I got a Nesta yeah. certification. It took me two days. Yeah. Me too. I started selling. <laughs> yeah. And so it really, what, what pisses people off is they get all butthurt because they go, well, I'm really good at what I do. So I deserve clients. I deserve to do this because I'm the best. And I've been doing this for 20 years. Like no one gives a shit. Yeah. Right. All they care about is, do they know you exist? Yeah. And so you can be the best trainer in the world, but most people, they just don't know you exist. There's 8 billion people on earth. Like your Instagram, if you have half a million followers, you're, no one knows you exist. It doesn't matter. Like you're still small. Yeah. So imagine if you're smaller than that. So I just think a lot of the trainers, they're not willing to learn how to do online. They'll also say shit like, Oh, well, I don't want to charge that much because I'm a good person. It's like, bro, it has nothing to do with being a good person. Like people are willing to pay it. And basically you're saying that you don't want to have a better life because you don't want to charge more, even though they'll pay it. They're If they don't pay you, they're going to pay someone else. And so that's just like a, I just think a lot of his mindset issues around the price. Yeah. And then just being willing to learn sales or they think, oh, I'm good at sales. I'm like, dude, you sell in person. Like, no offense. Like that's a 90% close rate every time. Yeah. I mean, that person's coming uh, in asking about like, I, well, it's not even the same. Yeah. It's not even the same. So when people say things like that, I'm just like, you're just, it, it's cool. You're just being ignorant and you're naive. Yeah. And, uh, that's what made me successful, bro. I just told people straight up. I'm like, I'm better at sales than everybody. And that's why I win. It's not, I'm not the best trainer and because yeah. training is not that hard. Like I said, I'll, I'll be careful. I say that someone who's overweight, it's not hard to train them. Move yeah. your ass eat a little less. That's it, man. It's not like, this isn't complex Olympic it's a science. It's already been figured out. Yeah, Olympic I, athletes. Like these aren't Olympic athletes. They're severely overweight typically, and they just need something they can stick to. That's easy. That's it. So if you try to overcomplicate it more than that, that's fine. But like simplicity scales, fancy fails. And I just think a lot of people put them at a disservice. Yeah. I a hundred percent agree with that. Cause a million years ago when I was a trainer, you know, I, for some reason, most trainers, I feel like their heads just explode once they start getting compliments from their clients or what have you. For me, it never happened. I was always kind of very insecure about it. And I was training this one guy who was super overweight, maybe 260, 275 pounds, and he couldn't even do walk for five minutes. And then after a few, two or three weeks, he's like jogging on the treadmill. He lost like 40 pounds in the first month or whatever it was. But it's so easy to lose weight when you're that, 
you know, you, when you start moving, it's, you're going to lose that weight and do whatever. And I never thought I was like a good trainer ever, ever. I always thought like, if you went to any other trainer here, you would have had the same exact, probably better results, you know? So I, I, I 100% agree with what you're saying is that all the trainers are going to lead you the same path. It's a matter of all these other X factors, like the sales, like how you present yourself, how you market yourself. That's what's going to really separate yourself. from and, the pack. Yeah. And even if you are a better trainer, like, I, I, again, like, I just hate to say this, but it's like, they don't care, man. Like yeah. you care, you think it matters. They don't care. And it's a lot, it's a lot of that. Like when I was in sports and I played, you know, football and stuff, like the girls don't care if you're starting or not, man. I mean, yeah. maybe to a degree, if they think you're going to go to the league and they can like ride that wagon, but like, they don't care. And it's like, you know, it's like girls today, like they don't care if you have a, you know, your 6% body fat. They're like, yo, if he's in good shape, it's good enough. I, I kind of feel it's the same way with fitness clients where we like trainers will tell, we'll tell ourselves, yeah, this is so important. Like I'm a, yeah. and no one cares. Yeah. 100%. You know? So you just got to get over that stuff. It's ego. It's all ego. What position did you play in football? I played linebacker. I was a little bigger, but I played linebacker and uh, I loved awesome. it. Uh, I loved awesome. it. Yeah. If it'll hit some people. <laughs> exactly. So what was the best decision you've made? The best decision I made was, I mean, there's a, there's a, there's a few critical moments in my life. I'll go through a couple, but like one decision was to start working out at 12. Cause I was getting bullied. I think that builds a tremendous amount of adversity. Yeah, yeah. And because I was messed with as a kid, I saw positive feedback from pushing through adversity so i started working out i did better in sports i got better grades like you know i i just like was like oh, okay cool so basically everything's people, positive yeah people fuck with me and i do this and they stop fucking with me yeah right and so it's a very positive reinforcement which is part of why i am the way i am for sure uh the decision to drop out of school i mean one of the biggest decisions of my life i remember the moment i was looking at my mentor and i called a m and they're like so we need to know if you're coming this semester and I like said one second. I like put the phone here. I'm looking. I'm like, and he's like, he's like, do it, bro, do it. <laughs> and I did that. That was a critical moment. And then you know the first time I hired a coach. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I I I was I, I'm. It's so funny because I get I get why people are the way they are. I mean, I've spent two million plus on coaches. So all the people who bitch and complain, I'm like, I mean, dude, I I know. But the thing is, it's like dating. And so people get butt hurt and they say it doesn't work. And I say, dude, if you date 10 girls, you marry one, would you say dating works? They're like, well, yeah, yeah of exactly. But it's like, oh, with coaches, it's not the same. That's just the price you have to pay. That's, yeah, the, price, that's the price it takes to be successful. And, you know, uh, I just look at it like school now. I'm just like, hey, I would have spent, you know, quarter million dollars on school. And instead I spent it here. And I think if people would do that, they'd actually get farther in life. I, I Absolutely. don't think Absolutely. How many, like, do you need the history, art history class if you're not even going and doing the business major? In fact, yeah. In fact, I had to take history four times because I would transfer schools or something would happen. And, and they'd say, oh, well, that, that history class is way different. And it's the same class. I got, I think I had a 99 or a 98 in history, like four times in a row. That's so frustrating. Well, you better, you took it four times, same class. Yeah, but it's it's just the same. <laughs> shit. So it, it, it's a game, dude. You know, it's a game. So I, I'm not against college. I think you go if you know what you want. But I think if you don't know what you want, you're doing yourself a huge disservice because you're spending money on a degree that you're not sure if you're going to need or use. And then you get out and no one cares. I've never asked anyone for their degree. I, I don't yeah. care. Who does? I, I exactly. Ask. Who asks people for the degree? Who even asks people for their certifications? Going back to the point before, like people talk about the so what certification they got. When was the last time? Like, like I always get access to the trainers. Like, when you get a client, do they ask you what certifications you have? Like, how often does that happen? Like, never. Right. Never, right. ever, ever. So why are they training with you? Because they like you. They like your personality. You like your culture. So all I hundred percent agree with everything you're saying here. Um, so you would concur that getting a coach is kind of a valuable uh, investment. I just don't, I just don't see people be successful without it. even people who say, Oh, well, Jeff Bezos never, I'm like, bro, he had mentors. Yes, he did. He just didn't pay. Yeah. Like, so, if you, so, so good. Great. If you can go find one for free, great. But the, the top dogs, they don't work for free. Yeah. Right. Like I I'm in Vegas. I'm good friends with um, Alex from Mosey. Yeah. He's great. I got up for four or five hours yesterday. Like, bro, he, he's not going to work with you. Like he's not, like, you know what I mean? So, so it's just, it's just stupid and naive to think that you're going to get someone of that caliber for free. Typically yeah. now if they know your dad or your mom or it works out awesome, but 
I just think people sacrifice time or speed for time. And it's just sad because we only have 80 years to live. And I'm, I'm 31 now. And it's already like, I, it's already just more precious. Like I'm just seeing, I will never, ever, ever trade my time again. And now that I've stepped out of the companies, I don't make as much if I would stay in it because I got to pay CEOs now, right? Yeah, I got, yeah, it's like yeah. very expensive. That's another 20, 30 grand a month, but the 20, 30 grand I would keep to stay and work, it's not worth it anymore. Yeah. And uh, you don't have any leverage. So I could go on and on, but I, I, do, I think, I think people put themselves at a massive disservice and disadvantage by thinking they will figure it out on their own. It just is bullshit. It's like, no, you won't. This business is complex and every business has nuances. And when I was in engineering, the more I dove into engineering, the more you realize you don't know. Stupid people think they know a lot. Smart people realize they know nothing. And that's yeah, just reality. I've heard that. I heard that. Some, I heard that this week. I don't know where I heard it. Someone else said that. That's, that's exactly right. That's 100% right. So I just want to ask you before, you know, winding things down here, but I definitely wanted to pick your brain as far as, and maybe it's not something you want to talk about, but like the most effective client acquisition strategies that you see here. I'm just thinking of what like the trainers, the coaches who are listening here or be interested in, you're obviously a superstar. Like what would you say right now, what's working as far as client acquisition strategies? What do you say? Yeah. I mean, like to be frank, uh, now that I own five companies, the most effective client acquisition strategy is just a better offer. Uh, I mean, that's the first thing. <laughs> Um, we have offer, we have an offer that gets $5 leads and we have one that has 30 and it's the same shit, but it's just better offer. So that's number yeah. one. And, and I didn't really believe it, but the, the thing is like certain offers can only scale so high. So like, I'll, I'll be, you know, candid with you. You know, I have a coaching offer, elite CEOs. I don't really know anyone, anyone who only does done with you coaching. Who's doing over two mil a month. Like I don't, if they do, let me know. I'd be very, I'd be very interested to meet them. I don't really see it because it's hard because you got John who comes in at a two, George who comes in at a six, Jill who comes in at a 10. And then if it doesn't go right, George blames you, but you're like, without being mean, you're like, George, you're like, you suck. You're not as good as Jill. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So it's hard to get that consistency. And that's what allows scale in terms of like marketing. What's the most effective. It's, it's either one of two things, right? It's either you do the old call funnel where you run everything straight to a page and your team is just blasting the leads, right? Yep. Or you run like kind of like a messenger funnel where you run things through messenger and then you have a team that goes in and DMs people. For us, typically, like it depends on what business I'm talking about, but typically the messenger is always done better because if they don't book the call on the VSL or the VSL is not up to par, et cetera, excuse me, then we're able to go back and follow up and make yeah. stuff happen. There's less friction to it. It's just less things could go wrong in that model. Yeah, Correct. Correct. I got it. I got it. All right. Well, I mean, this was, uh, you've accomplished so much in your 31 years. Like you, you, that's absolutely phenomenal. I mean, what's next for Tanner? Yeah. So I'm traveling the world right now. Um, I was told by, you know, many affluent people, they just said, Hey, you know, before you do anything else, travel the world, think, don't do anything, uh, see what's out there. And uh, it just keeps getting reinforced. You know, everyone keeps telling me that. They're just like, okay. that's that's 100% what you should do. So it feels weird because when you're making money doing nothing, um, that's weird, especially yeah. when it's like businesses. It's not like these passive income checks per se. It's like it's active companies, uh, but it's a different type of work. It's thinking versus doing. Yeah. But I think at the highest levels of the game, that's what it comes down to. It's, it's not a about what you're doing it's about the teams you assemble and what you're selling and that's what gets you to the next level right well i'm sure you've made a lot of great decisions over the last 10 years and i'm sure you're going to have continued success i really look forward to watching you on that journey if you uh in your travels you make it through eight in new york come down to my gym we'll, we'll work out we'll lift together or something and we'll hang absolutely. out yeah. <laughs> you have an open invitation anytime great you said you're in new york yeah yeah absolutely Cool. So anytime, I mean, I'm about a half hour from Manhattan, um, east on Long Island. So, uh, you know, absolutely, you know, love to. Right. Uh, so, summer it is because I can't stand the cold, but summer it is. Yeah, I me mean, neither. Yeah, I hear you. Well, thank you again. You were very generous giving us your time and all these little tidbits and everything. I really appreciate it. And you're a great guy and a lot of success. I'm really happy for you. And uh, good luck with everything. Thanks so much, man. Thanks.